Hi, we're now looking at the 17th topic of a course which is called Logic and so it's not a very uh, detailed topic or a very long topic uh, at least at GCSE level so I'm going to do my best not to overcomplicate it although uh, you might disagree by the end of it uh, so it should be relatively straightforward I hope so a bit of background so uh, Boolean Algebra was something first developed by a man named George in uh, 1847 and it's basically a way of formalizing logical relations so in the way that uh, numerical algebra deals with variables and numbers boolean algebra deals with boolean values which are true or, f true or false and so uh, the general idea of boolean algebra is that basic logical statements can be evaluated to one of two values as I say true or false and now we implement them in computers uh, one or zero uh, in binary so um, a couple of examples of what we might say are logical statements. So this one, the score was 2-1. It's either going to be true or false, depending on whether the actual score was 2-1. Uh, 9 is greater than 13. Well, that's false. We can say that definitely. We don't need to know any other background information. Uh, and a final one, um, this would be maybe for um, whether you have a, a proper driving license and you have to be over the age of 17 or sorry uh, greater than or equal to the age of 17 and you need to pass your driving test so um, this is really sort of two conditions using one boolean operator um, so we have sort of two conditions that are evaluated and then compared uh, so um uh, so one that's not a logical statement is this uh, asparagus is tasty because it's an opinion it's not a fact it's not something we can test um, although uh, it's probably arguable uh, anyway um, so as I say and actually this was covered in the operator video which was maybe something like topic 7 perhaps um, so there are three basic boolean operators you need to know and or not there are other ones basically built on from these first three um, and so you need to know about uh, what it describes as truth tables and truth tables are basically a way of representing combinations um, and every output based on these inputs uh, in a boolean expression and that probably didn't make much sense but really um, it's just a table so I, I don't think you need to know about uh, something called logic gate so this is a, di a diagram form of an AND logic gate um, but really uh, I'm trying to introduce as much um, different ways of representing things in this video because everywhere you look for this topic um, they use different notations and it can get a bit confusing when you go on a website and they're suddenly using diagrams like this which you haven't come across so uh, this is what an AND gate, so an, a, a logic gate is really the implementation of uh, the, uh, the, these uh, operators in a computer so this represents some circuit uh, that performs an AND operation so you know here uh, uh, George Ball uh, developed this you know, roughly 100 years before it was actually used in digital computers so um, it definitely predates it by quite a while um, so uh, when it's implemented we use logic gates and this is representation but this is how you'll sort of see it written so A and B here are two variables as is Q actually um, so they're boolean variables which is either going to be 0 or 1 or true or false you kind of have to get used to the idea of representing or sorry, flipping between uh, calling it zero, which is false, or one, which is true. And also, if you go on to do sort of proper Boolean algebra, maybe at least at A level and then further, uh, you have to sort of get f used to dealing with it both in terms of this and also in terms of like, in terms of a zero and one actually being numbers as opposed to just symbols. So you have to be a little bit flexible in your mind. Uh, so this would be represented, or oh, sorry, this is the Boolean operator. Uh, this would be represented in what is now a truth table. So a truth table is just. A basically a way of showing the input so A and B are inputs and output and the, out, the single output is Q uh, you only ever get one output or well, well, really you only get ever one uh, get one output and uh, two inputs at least well, sorry uh, with a not gate you get one input uh, so really what we're doing here we are um, using every single possible combination so, either, so A is either going to be 0 or 1 same with B um, and what the way you make sure you cover every combination is uh, this is zero in binary, uh, this is one in binary, this is two in binary, this is three in binary um, and so that's where you get every combination so it's four combinations because it's two squared because you have two inputs and so um, as we'll see now an AND gate uh, is only true if both conditions are true else the result, result is false and by true we mean one and false zero so this is again the truth table we just looked at so um, for Q the output um, Q, this can be any 
letter or just could be output. Uh, these can be any letters, like a variable, the name doesn't really matter, although they're usually capitals. Uh, so it's only ever going to be true or one when uh, both uh, inputs are true or both inputs are one. So uh, also alternative notation can also be written as A and this kind of uh, triangle B or A times B. So this is uh, a dot that's so same as like a multiplication sign and uh, you can see this is where a kind of a mathematical element comes in because all of these, so 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, uh, 1 times 0 is 0 but 1 times 1 is 1 and so that's where it comes from. Um, but you probably won't see it written as this but it might help to uh, explain it and so this is the uh, logic gate we just saw but again I don't think you need to know this. Okay so the next one is or and so it will be written a bit like this, um, pretty much the same format and so or returns true if either of the conditions are true and it will only ever return false if both conditions are false so if both are zero so we're getting the same kind of format for our truth table uh, and like I say it's only ever going to return false or zero when both are false everything else um, I like to think of it as being a bit more flexible the your gate it's a bit more uh, it's a bit less picky than the AND gate um, and so uh, it can also be written as a and then the opposite of this and then a plus b so as you can see 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1 and so on here uh, but 1 plus 1 isn't 1 but when we did our binary addition 1 plus 1 we write a 0 down and carry a 1 if you remember anyway uh, not really relevant so this is what the all gate looks like in case you see it um, so finally the not operate, uh, operator which is the simplest one and really uh, it only has one input and again one output and um, you, you write the input after the operator and so this just reverses or negates the input so another word for another way to describe a not operation is uh, negation um, and is conjunction and or is disjunction those are just three slightly more technical terms but they mean the same thing um, so this is what the truth table looks like for not game the simplest you just have two inputs um, so um, it's very easy to uh, make sure you cover everything and then just just flipped basically and this is what a uh, not um, yeah, it looks like uh, also it can be written as this I don't know how you describe that character but also with a bar over the top and maybe a more common notation okay uh, let's look at some examples so I've tried to make a uh, kind of real life situation here uh, I'm not very good at coming up with creative examples so I've done my best here uh, so the example is uh, um, or like an example question uh, an online retailer wants to offer a discount to customers that haven't bought with them before but only if they also enter a discount code email to them so you know sometimes um, like a bank or a uh, you know, or any online retailer uh, will only offer a discount to new customers they don't want current customers saving money they want to encourage customers to join uh, but only if they then enter a discount code so um, a uh, boolean expression is what we uh, what this is uh, to show this would be um, well first we kind of need to define what our boolean variables are so if we say a is a returning customer so maybe we have to log in and it can tell if they're returning or not um, or instead of a new customer and so we don't want um, a returning customer to get this discount but we need them to if they're not a returning customer so if they're new we also need them to enter this discount code so we need both the discount code and them to not be a returning customer then we get our output which I've called R for no uh, particular reason um, so if we are going to display the combinations in a truth table that could be a second part to this question um, and often they'll sort of fill in um, the first couple of columns because this should be relatively straightforward um, but the idea of this slide is really just to show you that you can have truth tables with more than your minimum amount of columns. Often you have kind of intermediate steps to help you because it can get a bit complicated. So this example is not too bad. The next one was slightly harder. Um, so if we try and fill this in, um, the first thing you're going to do is find not a. And so you, this might be written in. If I was constructing this from scratch, I would kind of work out that actually this is kind of an intermediate step. We need to work out this before we uh, work out. Uh, the main one, so we need to kind of just evaluate this. Um, there is an order of precedence, a bit like bod maths or bid maths, whatever you call it, maths, um, and it goes not and, and then or. And so we're evaluating not first, but generally anything in brackets you evaluate first, a bit like you know, what well, the same as in maths. Uh, so we're going to evaluate this first and then we can evaluate the whole uh, and operation. So not a here is going to be one, uh, not a here is also going to be one, and then we have two zeros here because. Uh, 
not true, it's false. And then we now have to work out the output. And so we kind of we've kind of collapsed this into this column. And so now we're kind of working out and between uh, these two. Doesn't really matter which order. So we're doing and between B and not A. So again with and we said that it's only going to be true if both are true. So immediately we have a zero here, so this is going to be a zero. Uh, this is going to be a true. This is the only case it's going to be true because we have two inputs that are true. Um, everything else is going to be a false, as you can see. So only uh, the output, only the person gets this discount if they are um, a uh, they enter the discount code symbolizing the one and they are uh, not a returning customer, so they're new. And so it works quite nicely. It shows uh, this example in action, hopefully. Um, so I couldn't think of a uh, a uh, proper example to do this slightly harder version where we basically have both sides as something we need to uh, work out in an intermediate stage. Um, so first thing to say, I'm going to fill this and do this from scratch. And what I was trying to say earlier, um, if you have, say, one input, so for the not gate, it's basically two to the power one uh, rows, so two rows. Um, whereas if we have two inputs, we have two to the power two, which is four rows. So like here, with two inputs, A and B, with four rows, with two variables being used. Um, and then we have three inputs here with X, Y, and Z. Um, and this is gonna be two to the power three, which is eight. And so we have eight rows, if you can see here. And um, that's how you can make sure you make uh, make sure you uh, cover everything basically. And so, uh, if I just fill it in uh, in the, the binary values, okay. So I've gone up from zero to a binary value of, of uh, seven. If you can see what I've done here. Um, so the next step is to actually. Uh, fill in the next column. So again, I've done the intermediate step, this bit in brackets, and then we've got the not as the next column, then we've got our output Q. So um, X and Y, uh, again, this is the uh, same process as above. Um, we only, we're only going to have this as a one if both X and Y are one. So I've got to be a little bit careful to uh, make sure I do this right. In fact, we're only going to get uh, for bottom two um, as uh, one because they're where the only two which have which are both true, uh, so not z is going to be just the opposite. It's very easy to mess up when you're talking at the same time. Uh, so then we have q. So we're basically just now going or uh, these two, yeah. So um, or it's only ever going to be false if both are zero. So this one is going to be true. This one is going to be false. This one is going to be true, false, true, false, true, true. So we only have three uh, combinations which are going to result in false in this example. Um, so that is an example of maybe when it gets slightly more complicated, um, but really it's got to be a little bit cautious and take it step by step and it'll be fine. Okay, um, hopefully that was useful. Uh, next up we're looking at software, I believe. Uh, so thank you for watching.